Hello, fellow captains. I hope you're having a wonderful time in Star Trek Online. It is currently the summer event, so everybody's trying to do their flying high so they can get their Xyphius escort cruiser. It's a Vorgon ship. I know I'm working for it. Uh, the flying high event, by the way, just a side note real quick. So, so much very easier with a very high quality level floater. Let me tell you, that rental they give you, terrible. I purchased a very high quality floater and you have so much better control over your floater with the very high quality version. You can turn better, you can quickly stop and start so much easier and you do move faster with it. So it is, it allows better control basically. So if you have the 1000 low nut favors to get it, it's worth it. So that's just a little bit of side information there for you guys in the summer event, having fun there. So here's the deal. Today's video is going to be another news update in Star Trek Online. Obviously we've got Agents of Yesterday coming up on July 6th, uh, a new expansion. Um, they're calling it the Toss Faction. Yeah, they're calling the original series content that's coming a faction which kind of goes against what defines or is a faction. We could debate about that all day, but when it comes down to it, when you think of a faction, you think of playing as a certain alien or species uh, that exists in the Star Trek universe. For example, humans or, you know, Federation or, or uh, the KDF or Romulan Republic or whatever. That's a faction. But Toss is a series. I mean, it's a it's the older series, the original one, but it's not a faction. It's it's a series. So, but they're looking at it like it's another faction and calling it a faction. Now, the problem with doing that is, is the content going to match what a faction provides? You guys know how full the Federation faction is in content and missions and everything. The KDF faction has finally come up to a level. It took it a very long time, but it finally came up to a level that is almost on par with the Federation faction. Not, not quite. It's still a little under it in terms of content, but it's close, closer than it ever was. Then you have the Romulan faction, which is, n n I would say, not even half of that one. Maybe, ha maybe half the KDF content. It's very, and the reason why is because it's a shared faction. You have to join the Federation or the Klingons in it. You don't get to stay with the Romulan, quote, faction the entire run through, which is really weird and obnoxious. And so I, I consider it a half faction, but Toss, here it comes and they're calling it a faction. So that's just a topic for debate. You guys can talk about that until you're blue in the face. I, I don't look at it like a faction, but they are. So anyway, let's move on. What we're going to do is just give you some news updates and let you guys know what new stuff has been announced or shown since the last news video. And I'm doing this, I'll probably do this every, uh, maybe every one or two weekends uh, in a month. Uh, so that we can see what's new with Star Trek Online, if there's any big news, especially now that... Uh, Agents of Tomorrow is, is coming, then, uh, Agents of Yesterday, I mean, is coming, then, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of news updates before it arrives, and then even after it arrives, there's still going to be some news updates about it, specifically. So it's all very important. Anyway, I, I digress. We're going to scroll up here and start from where I left off in the last video. Um... We talked about the Xyphius. I think I made a video about the ships coming and the summer events. Um, release notes stuff, Army of Me. I think we'll start right here with um, 23rd century starships as well as some brand new molecular reconstruction ability. So let's start here on this one. 23rd century ship stats. So of course, with all of this, we're getting 23rd century starships in the game. That in itself, I think, is exciting. I'm looking forward to that. With the release of our third expansions, third expansion, Agents of Yesterday, we'll be making four new 23rd century starships 
available to players. We're very excited to reveal these ships as well as the brand new molecular reconstruction mechanic that is present on all of these ships. Each of these starships also include a unique console. This is a pretty long blog. I'm not going to read it like really in depth because it is really long. I'm kind of going to skip over to the important parts. But I recommend you go through and read this in detail if you want to learn all about these 23rd century ships, their stats, and what this molecular reconstruction mechanic is all about. So the starships will be available in a number of ways. They're going to be available through the Temporal Special Agent Pack, which you can purchase or individually in the C store. So you can still buy these just separately in the C store. So let's read about this molecular reconstruction mechanic. Temporal starships are capable of making subtle alterations on the molecular level through the use of molecular reconstruction. This technology allows the starship to assume one of three different configurations, defensive, offensive, and support. Each configuration has their own strengths and weaknesses. Each of the configurations generate their own specific counter. Up to six counters can be generated at a time. These counters are used to fuel your molecular deconstructor, deconstruction beam. So the whole key and idea with these ships is that these ships are kind of temporal ships. They're like future ships that are made to look like or constructed in a way to be 23rd century ships to not scare the locals. So on the outside and on the inside, they look like 23rd century ships, but at the heart of it, there's some advanced future technology here that allows them to take on different roles as needed. You have a defensive configuration. While this configuration is active, the starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to feel more of a defensive role. This provides a boost to maximum shield power and incoming hull healing. This comes at a cost of a small reduction to flight speed and turn rate. So there's a defensive configuration, the offensive one. While this configuration is active, the Starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to fill more of an offensive role. This provides a boost to maximum engine, power, speed, and turn. This comes at a cost of small reduction to incoming hull healing. So no extra weapon power on that one, which you think would be part of an offensive configuration, but no, they're going with engine power on that. Then you've got support configuration. While this configuration is active, the starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to fill one more support role. This provides a boost to maximum auxiliary power, control strength, and exotic damage. So that's good for a science ship, I guess. This comes at a cost of a small reduction to energy weapon damage. So none of these boost your energy weapon damage, which is really odd. The defensive one is shield and hull healing. The offensive one is engine power, speed, and turn rate. And the support configuration is auxiliary power, control strength, and exotic damage. None of these boost weapons. So I guess if you have a science ship, support configuration would help you if you have a a cruiser maybe or an escort offensive configuration and the defensive configuration for a cruiser who uh, you want to tank a lot I guess so there you go but nothing with weapon power activating this ability okay there's something called a molecular deconstruction deconstruction beam activating this ability requires a total of six counters generated by the defensive configurations Offensive configuration or support configuration, molecular deconstruction beam deals physical damage over time and disables the target, in addition to healing your hull over time. This power's damage scales with the number of uh, counters you have. Its hull healing scales with the number of defensive. Blah, blah, blah. Activating this ability will consume all offensive, defensive, and support counters generated from configurations. So basically an extra ability there, an extra weapon that does physical damage from from those configurations okay sure why not i guess <laughs> a physical physical damage weapon so here is the daedalus class science vessel um you might have seen this in toss a starship designed from the early years of starfleet the daedalus class is a science vessel um so it's a tier two starship so i mean these are not tier five or six starships these are not in-game ships these are ships that you will fly, I guess, as you level your character upwards. So this is a tier two ship, a two tier science ship. You know, it's the stats on it look like what a tier two ship would look like. One ensign tactical, one ensign engineering, one lieutenant science, one lieutenant universal. Two tactical, one engineering, two science. 
auxiliary power, sensor analysis, subsystem targeting, secondary. Oh, it does have a secondary deflector slot, which is neat for a tier two ship, you know, anyway. Console, universal. It has a universal console called a tempora temporal destabilizer probe and the molecular reconstruction ability, of course. Again, these ships are from the future. They're just designed to look like old, old ships. So the temp temporal dis destabilizer probe uh, console. While this console is equipped, the starship can deploy a probe that travels forward slowly. This probe disrupts the flow of time of any foe who is within two kilometer of the probe's path. Affected enemies will have their flight speed, turn rate, and weapon firing cycles dramatically reduced. So it kind of slows everything down, but um, yeah, they have to be within two kilometers of the probe's path, which is very close for that to have any impact. Here's the Perseus class escort. This is going to be a, the tier three ship or a tier three ship. A versatile escort from the 23rd century. The Perseus class escort incorporates several state of the art systems for the time, including the M6 computer. Designed to provide rapid tactical analysis of the battlefield, the M6 had none of the troublesome drawbacks of its infamous predecessors. So this is the commander level ship, 18,000 hull. Three forward, two aft, one lieutenant commander tactical, one lieutenant engineering, one lieutenant science, one lieutenant universal. Three tactical, one engineering, two science. It can use uh, cannons, of course. And it's got a universal console called the M6 computer, which I guess is going to be something about firing patterns or something. Molecular reconstruction. The temporal escort comes equipped with the M6 computer console. It was designed to provide rapid tactical analysis. When the M6 computer is activated, it will provide a substantial boost to weapon damage, accuracy, defense, weapon cycle haste, and tactical bridge officer ability reduction rate. That's huge, actually. I wonder if we can use that console on other escorts. See, it may be equipped on any starship, and it may be equipped in any console slot. So, wow, this is a really good console. I mean, it'd be good on an escort for sure, any escort, any ship. Boost weapon damage boost accuracy and defense and weapon cycle haste and your reduces your tactical bridge officer ability recharge rate i mean that is an incredible console right there with that one combined with all the other buffs we already have on the game you're going to be doing a whole lot of damage i think i like that console a lot already i want that console on all my tactical ships all my all my escorts <laughs> they're getting the m6 computer it may be a 23rd century computer in a 25th century starship, but it seems to be better. Gosh darn it. <laughs> so everybody's getting it. All right, let's look at this one. This is the Gemini class, known for a distinctive set of four warp nacelles. Um, it was inspired by future starship engineers when designing the Constellation class. A tenacious vessel, the Gemini was often used by Starfleet as a weapons system test bed in the field. So this is our captain level ship, 31,750 hull, 1.05 shield modifier, four weapon, four, four, three aft, one lieutenant commander tactical, one ensign engineering, one commander engineering, one lieutenant science, one ensign universal, three tac, three engineering, two science. Mm, the universal console is called temporal destabilizer matrix. It also comes with the cruiser command array abilities. Okay, let's see, a temp let's see. When the console is activated, it will release a temporal shockwave that causes physical damage over time to nearby enemies and reduces damage resistance and shield hardness to all affected foes. So this here's another weapon that's also doing physical damage. So this combined with that other destabilizer thingy beam above, deconstruction beam or whatever, you got two things here that can do physical damage to enemies, two types of weapons, two different types of weapons that are doing physical damage. All right, the Ranger class battle cruiser. This is the Rear Admiral ship. The Agile Ranger class was one of the most respected battle cruisers of the 23rd century. A tactical powerhouse, the Ranger was built for combat resolution. As a result, these vessels were often deployed on the front line in conflicts with the Klingons and Romulans. So let's see, four weapons, four aft. One Lieutenant Commander Tactical, one Ensign Tactical, one Commander Engineering, though. It's not a Commander tactical is commander engineering one lieutenant commander science one ensign universal three tac four engineering consoles two science so it's very heavy on the engineering not so much the tactical even though it says it's a powerhouse of a ship 
Um, it has the photonic decoy beacon. Let's see what that does. This beacon disrupts enemy sensors and gives off the same energy signature as your starship. Enemies within 5 kilometers will be lured into attacking it. Enemies that attack and damage the beacon will suffer shield damage. Have their damage resistance and shield hardness reduced. Okay, I guess. Sounds interesting. So those are some of the 23rd century ships we'll be leveling up with in the game. Uh, the Deadless was the Lieutenant Commander, of course. But what's before the Lieutenant Commander ship? What's our starting ship? Our lieutenant or even ensign? No, I guess lieutenant ship. Don't know, actually. Okay. Well, there you guys go. There's some information. You can go dive into that if you want a whole lot more. I'm not going to go over this too much, but basically for the consoles, they're getting a whole UI remake. And, of course, naturally it has to because you're using a controller, not a keyboard and mouse. So you got to have your A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z buttons working and paddle shifters or whatever else it has on it. So you guys can read this if you're interested in playing the console version. This UI blog will be very important because it explains how to use it pretty much. And it looks okay, but to me, I'm a keyboard and mouse player. That's just who I am. I'm not a controller player. A keyboard and mouse to the bone. So I'm going to keep using that for this game. But I guess this could be exciting for people with consoles. Let's see what else we have. Temporal specialization. So here's another specialization. Note in this picture, here's a 31st century outfit. So he's from the 31st century, Daniel's time. But it looks like he's looking out the window of that temporal space station planet thing that we had a mission on once. We're pleased to announce an upcoming expansion to the Captain's Specialization System in the form of an entirely new pri primary specialization called Temporal Operative. Thematically tied to both the past and future, this new specialization will become available with the launch of Ancients of Agents of Yesterday. Um, as if the scientific concepts that modern spacefaring species were grappling with on a daily basis weren't complicated enough, Along came the widespread use of time manipulation. Almost overnight, entirely new mathematics became necessary. Old theories that many knew by rote were rewritten, and the entire battlefield changed. Leading the charge in this strange new era are these few brilliant and talented enough to be called temporal operatives. These specialists adhere to the tenets of the temporal accords. Blah, 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 blah. Temporal operatives is a primary specialization, but captains may instead instead slot it as secondary if only they wish to benefit from the first 15 abilities offered. Abilities may be purchased in this specialization even while it is inactive. With the introduction of a new primary specialization, we are also increasing the cap on specialization points up to a new max of 150. Players that exceed this amount will instead receive dilithium ore when they max out their specialization XP bar. So here are the things. Scaling passive. As long as you have the temporal operative specialization active, you will gain oh, exotic particle generation skill and kit performance skill. This bonus starts at plus five and goes up. As with previous specializations, purchasing abilities in the temporal operative specialization will unlock new starship traits. After 15 abilities are purchased, you will unlock non-linear progression, an unconventional tactic to say the least, engaging your ship in reverse will offer benefits as you slowly slide backwards in time at a very measured pace. Removes the power drain penalty from moving in reverse. After traveling in reverse for 5 seconds, you restore a small amount of hull and shields every second while remaining in reverse. So everybody, let's fly our ships and go into combat in reverse. Got that? After 30 abilities are purchased, you gain access to the improved non-linear progression, which functions the same as above, but adds, after traveling in reverse for 5 seconds, reduce all recharge timers by 0.2 seconds every second while remaining in reverse. Wow. Alright, here's the abilities. We've got Entropic Rider Space. 
Your energy weapons gain two and a half chance of afflicting foes with a physical damage over time. Decay amplification ground. 10 to 20% damage dealt by all of your activated damage over time effects. Inevitip... I... This way... This word. Inevitability is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you have to not think about trying to say the word for the word to come out right. All exotic damage abilities gain recharge speed. All kit module abilities gain recharge speed. Okay. <laughs> Uncertainty. Space and ground. Activating any exotic damage or kit module grants you a moderate amount of temporary hit points and a long duration. Temporal rebuke. 10% chance when struck by a foe within 10 meters, foe is teleported 30 meters and rooted for 2 seconds. Okay. Add a strong physical damage over time effect to foes that are struck by a temporal rebuke. Anomaly leash. Your anomalies slowly move towards your current target foe. Includes gravity well, Tycoon's Rift, and Subspace Vortex, and more. Phasic artillery. Your mines and targetable torpedoes gain an, a large amount of temporal hit points after launch. And continuity. Once every three minutes, when reduced below 10% hull, teleport 8 kilometers backwards, heal a massive amount of hull and shields, and drop all threats. <laughs> Some weird stuff, but okay, I guess we'll see how that works out. I don't know how useful it's going to be, but you guys tell me if any of that sounds exciting to you, because it's a lot of numbers and stuff for me right now. Again, uh, we have another picture of a 31st century person here uh, with the timeline of the universe in front of him. That's what I'm going to call it. We saw this on Enterprise with Daniels at the end of the Temporal, War, Temporal Cold War time uh, storyline mission. Storyline. So uh, I guess the 31st century is coming back in Star Trek Online. We're going to be seeing more 31st century stuff. So that's interesting. In the ongoing battle to safeguard the sanctity of the timelines, talented officers from all different disciplines are undergoing specialized training to understand and manipulate the flow of time itself and the occasionally malleable relationship between cause and effect. So these are bridge officers. These are temporal bridge officers. Temporal boffs. These are not doffs. These are bridge officers. Uh, temporal operatives. So we're getting like a whole new, a whole new line of bridge officers, just like you had intelligence pilot and command commander commander commando no commander something command maybe just call it command we have those three now we're getting a fourth one it looks like called temporal operative upon the release of agents of yesterday existing bridge officers will now have the ability to train in this new specialization through the use of specialization qualifications the av availability of new bridge officers that have temporal operative training will be limited, but the temporal agent bundle contains six temporal operative specialization qualifications to get your existing bridge officer crew into the habit of manipulating space and time in no time. Once granted, the temporal operative specialization training manuals for rank 1 and 2 temporal operative abilities will be available for the purchase from any bridge officer training store. Rank 3 abilities can be unlocked by advancing in the temporal operative captain specialization tree and then created using the new officer training R&D school. So, of course, with new a whole new thing, they're going to have temporal abilities. Localized tricks of causality, glimpses into alternate quantum realities, the speeding and slowing of time itself. These are the tools and tricks that the temporal operative brings to aid in combat. The specialization presents a strong emphasis on science-leaning uh, science tactics with a focus on dealing exotic damage, controlling foes, movements, and stripping their defenses. The new entropy mechanic is unique to temporal operative bridge officers. Many of their abilities will be classified as either a builder or a consumer, with builders adding one or more applications application of an entropy to the foes affected while a consumer will remove entropy on a target in order to enhance its effects entropy is a source specific meaning that your consumers cannot benefit from the entropy applied to your foe by a teammate a new ui element will prominently display the amount of entropy currently applied to you or your foes at all times each foe may have up to a maximum of five applications of applications of entropy present per, per source what in the crap 
do they really need to add this to the game? Because it sounds like that's really making things more complicated than it needs to be. I mean, I was already, you know, up there and com complex with just having another whole set of specialized bridge officer called temporal operatives on top of the command intelligence and pilot we already have that in itself was complex enough because that's going to bring a whole slew of abilities now we have another whole thing called entropy with a whole new ui element and this consumer and builder deal what in the crap the damage dealt by temporal operative abilities is classified as physical since it deals with the destruction of matter at a subatomic level through processes such as decay and rot. This damage, unless specifically designed to influence shields, will instead ignore them entirely. For this reason, the actual damage dealt by a temporal operative ability may be at first glance appear lower than other alternatives, but may actually end up outperforming those alternatives. I guess damage over time stuff is what they're talking about there. Uh, let's get into this. Ooh, there's a lot here, guys. I'm, again, I'm just going to kind of briefly go over this because there's a ton of stuff here. So I just recommend you guys go and study this if you really want to learn what these new abilities are. Because there's no way I'm going to remember this. I mean, I'm not even going to really learn this until I go into the game and actually use it. It's only through use and experimentation and experience that I even remember how these things work and what they are and what they do. So... We're going to have something called... We're going to have a lot of ground abilities, basically. Degeneration. Afflict a single foe with a physical damage over time. Again, all these are physical damage over time. Entropic... Entropic contagion. Chronometric diffusion. Ca casual entanglement. Uncertainty burst. Recursive affliction. Spread decay. Chronoplasty. Temporal narcosis. Paradox Bomb. Create an unstable anomaly at the target's location which will pull nearby foes toward its epicenter. For, for, so it's like a gravity well on the ground. <laughs> Tach, tachyonic Conversion. Instantly drain the shields of all foes within a medium radius around yourself for storing your own shields. That's cool. I like that. Space Abilities. Channel Deconstruction. Entropic, entropic Cascade. Chronometric Inversion Field. Shared Fate. Toggle ability centered on self, which weakens the shield hardness of all foes. Okay. Um, Heisenberg Amplifier. The targeted foe and all of their allies are instantly teleported at a random direction. Facing a random direction. Well, that's kind of mean. Um, recursive shearing entropic redistribution. Casual reversion. Rapid decay. Timeline collapse. Yeah, let's collapse the talent timeline. Sounds like a great idea, guys. Good, good job. Create an unstable anomaly at the target's location, which will pull nearby foes toward its epicenter for a few seconds. Gravimetric conversions. Instantly drain the shield. So these, basically the ground and space ones are kind of similar. They're just called different things. But, uh, wow, guys. Just, just naming these, calling them out, saying them out loud. People are going to, like, have some s stuttering on these things here. Uh... Yeah, well, there you go. There's a chart. I don't know what it means. Ability name, build or okay. So here's this new build. Is it a build or is it a consume ability? Like degeneration, it's build. Uncertainty burst is build. Spread decay is apparently build and consume. Entropy contagion is build. Chronoplasty even has a little star by it, which means it's not even completely consumer. There's something in addition. Recursive affliction. Uh, Ensign, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander, Commander, and that shows you the what ability those are. Man, this is just, I, just, I can't remember all this. I don't know. No, new players are going to be totally confused. Even old players are going to be confused. What ships or seats allow the use of temporal operative abilities? In order to use the temporal operative space abilities, you must be flying a starship that has a hybrid temporal operative bridge officer seat. They are not usable in universal professional seats, profession seats, or existing specialist bridge officer seats. Many of the starships that will have these new seats have already been announced as part of the temporal agent bundle, but we have not yet released their stats. So you can't just put this on a universal slot, you know, on your ship. Your ship has to have the hybrid temporal operative bridge officer seating in order for these to be uh, utilized. 
just like pilot needs a pilot bridge officer seating and command needs a command and intelligence needs an intelligence. You have to have those abilities on the ship. So all the tier six ships that we're all loving and enjoying and have invested all our money in right now, none of them can equip any of this at all. You're going to have to spend money, spend resources, whatever to get new ships. It's the new ships that can support these, not the old ones. So there you go. What else do we have? We have, what is this? Okay, temporal defense reputation. I saw this, I looked at it, I read this. I've already read a lot of these news here. I'm just going over them again for you guys and trying to wrap my head around it even more. So when I first saw this screenshot, um, you know, this, this outfit, totally the first thing that hits my mind is I got a very Mass Effect vibe from the look of, of this ground set. Make it big here so you can see it. That's the new ground. This is the going to be the new temporal ground armor that you can put on to fight temporal things, I guess. Um, so yeah, this is this is it. And I guess obviously the the it's like an internal, you know, head up display inside or whatever. Uh, but to me, I, I just got a very Mass Effect vibe when I first looked at it. It, it doesn't look anything like Star Trek. If you sat somebody down in a chair didn't show anything else but this picture to them they would say oh that looks like a cool sci-fi game because it doesn't look anything like star they would not say that looks like a star trek game if you said does this remind you of star trek and they'd say no not at all because <laughs> it's a generic sci-fi kind of look it has nothing to do with star trek so you know, I, I've, I've often criticized their design choices on some things simply because it is very generic sci-fi. Not really screaming Star Trek. Now that said, am I going to get it? Well, sure, I'm going to get it because I have every reputation already and I have to have this one too, of course. The Temporal Defense Initiative will be established in 20 blah blah blah. Um... Temporal defense reputation is what it's called. Submitting a temporal marks will increase your standing with the temporal defense initiative. These can be earned by participating in the Days of Doom and the Battle of Pro 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 Procyon. Is it Procyon or Procyon or Procyon? One of those cues, as well as the Badlands Battle Zone. Each source of marks allows for scaling rewards. Increasing the number of temporal marks received by performing above expectations or completing bonus objectives. So just like every other reputation out there, you have to join in the queues in order to get the marks. And this one is going to have one called Days of Doom you can play, or the Battle of Procyon or Procyon or whatever. And then the Badlands Battle Zone. They're also going to allow the Badlands Battle Zone to have temporal marks. So that's very good. So those are the things you can go do to get temporal marks. On top of that, there will be advanced and elite versions of the queues. But on top of that, there's always an extra little thing you have to have to buy, actually buy the gear in the reputation. This one's going to be called Chronoton Buffers. Chronoton Buffers are used by a number of time-traveling cultures in the galaxy. They shield their users from an unstable Chronoton emission and fluctuations, both in and out of time stream. High-end gear projects will require a small number of Chronoton Buffers to claim the best equipment the Temporal Defense Initiative has to offer. The Temporal Defense Initiative will also exchange Chronoton Buffers for Dilithium Ore. So just like everything else, you know, like with the Delta Alliance, you have to have those ancient power cells. So with the, with the Temporal Reputation, you're going to have to have Chronoton Buffers to buy stuff. Here are some weaponry, uh, or a picture of some weaponry. There's a rifle and some dual pistols. Um, so we're going to get some kind of weird looking, supposed to be futuristic looking weaponry, but I just think it is very, very boring. Assault, dual, dual pistols, and a rifle. But to me, these look very, very boring in design. I like the purple. I like the, uh, the line through here. But the texture itself is what I'm getting at. It just looks like a piece of wood. I mean, it just doesn't look good. It's very, very not very detailed. The shape is okay. It's like the it's just the texture to me is just so terrible, and the color is so terrible. This this brown color, yeah, yuck. Um, so here's what you can get. There's going to be a Starship Technology set 
There's going to be a deflector dish, an impulse engine, a regenerative shield, and a warp core for this set. Uh, you can read all about that by coming here, but temporal defense initiative deflector arrays are designed to allow ships to outlast any situation. They increase the hull and shield restoration capabilities of ships, increase control, and enhance the ship's particle generators. Um, the engine does stuff. The shield is just a regenerative shield. It's not a covariant. See, this shield is, array is highly resistant to shield draining effects and energy damage. Additionally, the built-in shield emitter matrix dynamically regenerates itself in response to threats, increasing its passive shield regeneration rates as the shield sustains more damage. And then the warp core shunts portion of its auxiliary subsystem into weapons. So that's interesting. The warp core is authorized to use a higher warp factor when in sector space, as temporal operatives are required to rapidly travel to different locations and points in time. So there's a space set, and there's another space set too. The Starship Technologies, let's see, this is called the Temporal Defense Initiative Starship Technology Set Bonuses. You've got pre predict, uh, Predictive Decay Algorithm increases strength of damage. Oh, this is, this is the two, three, and four piece bonus from this up here. So you get increased strength of damage over time effects. Using engineering team, science team, or tactical team gives you control and drain expertise. And then temporal fracture with all four hold and deal physical damage over up to four targets within a two kilometer radius. So a more physical damage. This, this time stuff I'm noticing is all about physical damage. There's also an armament or a weapon set. These are consoles. So you've got a universal chroniton drive actuator. Harnesses residual chronotons found around temporal incursions to enhance the ship's power levels. Then you have a chroniton torpedo launcher. So a lot of chroniton here. That means anti-proton buffing is going to be important for the time stuff. Advanced temporal defense chroniton torpedoes are designed to leave a matrix of chroniton particles on the firing ship, which can increase the user's flight speed, turn rate, shield hardness, and shaves precious time off the recharge rate of bridge officer abilities. The weapon's high-yield mode fires a cluster torpedo at the target, which deploys a series of chroniton mines. Advanced temporal defense chroniton weapon. So you got a beam or a dual heavy cannon. And uh, basically, it's a chroniton beam. It also leaves a matrix of chroniton particles on the firing ship, which can increase the user's flight speed, blah, 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 blah. And here's a, it looks like a picture of that weapon here. And, well, all I can say is, finally, finally, guys, we can shoot freaking rainbows from our ships. There it is. I can, I'm not making this stuff up. It's right there in front of you. This ship's firing rainbows. So get out your My Little Ponies and fire some rainbows off because that's where we're heading today. Now you also have the temporal defense initiative armament set bonuses from from that from that set up there. You get increased energy weapon damage and increased critical severity, and your weapons gain gain armor penetration and shield penetration. Whew. Now there's a ground set too. We just looked at the picture at the very top. There's the ablative combat armor, the initiative personal shield, and the chroniton dual pistols are part of the set. Um, I'm just kind of glancing over this. Knock attackers away. Temporarily overload the output of the wearer's energy-based weapons. The benefits from that, increased anti-proton damage on the ground. Increased anti-proton damage resistance. Hold and deals physical damage over time at up to four targets within a nine meter radius of you. Interesting. Um, kit modules. Why not? Let's have some kit modules too, why don't we? Mechanic Kit Module Bioharmonic Emitter deploys a bioharmonic layer around your team. This layer provides additional protection against incoming attacks. Um, research Kit Module Anti-Time Entanglement Field creates a localized anti-time distortion around the target, damaging and slowing enemies within its radius. The Assault Kit Module is Chroniton Micro Torpedo Spread 
launch a spread of Chroniton Micro Torpedoes. The torpedoes home in on your target and up to six additional foes at once. Wow, they do kinetic damage, slow, nine, and knockback. And if firing rainbows out of your ship wasn't enough, let's fire some rainbows on the ground too. Why don't we? Actually, it looks kind of pretty. Here's where I really got that Mass Effect look. I mean, just look at his outfit. Look at that. That screams Mass Effect. Not the rainbows, but his suit. <laughs> all right, and we also have traits associated with all of this. Temporal flux, con temporal flux conditioning, miniaturized chrono capacitor, temporal flux dissipators, chrono capacitor array, combat awareness, reprisal, controlled countermeasures, counterstroke. Let's have a counterstroke. Wow, guys. And, of course, the trait. The uh, space trait. Anti-time entanglement singularity. Anti-time entanglement singularity creates an anti-time anomaly in the target's immediate vicinity. The singularity causes severe physical damage to the foe. Click, it says. There is nowhere to click. Oh, it's a clicking ability, I think is what it means. Oh, my gosh, guys. My brain is about to be fried. I... I'm not comprehending any of this at this moment. Days of Doom. It did talk about this. This is one of the cues you can play. Temporal Command has detected an undocumented enemy incursion. So this is going to be the Doomsday device. Days of Doom is a new five-player cross-faction queue. Level 60 and up. So basically, it's a Doomsday weapon. I'm just, I'm just reading this. I mean, I guess it is what the picture shows. We're going to be fighting a doomsday weapon. Bonus mark weekend going on right now. You know, you can go do that. 23rd century ship art. Not going to go over all this, but if you want to learn how they design these ships, obviously there's the original that it all came from. Uh, you can read this and it will give you some background on how they created all those ships. Very, very long read, but... Um, worth it if you're interested in uh, graphic design and stuff like that or even just star trek in general release note star trek memories art team again more about the art not going to go over that you can read their input and feedback and see what they have to say and then this here what is this weekly before and after oh, 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 oh yeah remember they're redoing the graphics in the game the, specifically with lighting so here's a before and after I mean yeah it looks a lot better with the new lighting I mean definitely superior than it was before not as flat but it's still the textures that get me textures are very low quality still so you know you got that going on good quality lighting more light sources uh, more lighting more light points you know, and all that is, is delicious and good. But uh, texture quality is still low to me. And uh, ambient occlusion is still ancient, ancient, ancient in this game. As is shadowing. Anyway, cool, cool, cool. So there you go, guys. Um, really big stuff here is about the ships. The temporal reputation coming. The, temp the, uh, the specialization. The uh, temporal specialization coming. Uh, the temporal bridge officer seating that's coming. Uh, the, the bridge officers you can have. whole lot of stuff. There are a whole, a whole new set of abilities to learn. I mean, it's already complicated enough in the game. And here comes just a whole new slew of everything else. Uh, that's a lot of content. I'm not going to lie. That's a lot of new stuff. But it does seem like a lot of stuff. And it's kind of hard now to figure out what powers you should use anywhere. Because they're all starting to bleed together. <laughs> I don't know though. Um, you guys let me know what you think. That's what's been announced so far. By the way, the date is 6-18-2016. So that's the news as of June 18th. As more comes along the rest of this month, which I'm sure it will before we still have a couple weeks to go or a few weeks before July 6th. So I'm sure there'll be a lot more news coming. 
So when when it does, I will be sure to post it for you guys. Uh, either either once every weekend, if there's a lot of news, or um, if there's not a lot of news, then once every couple of weeks is what I'll do. So there you go, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little update. Let me know what you guys think of all that temporal stuff coming. Again, just real briefly, you got the temporal reputation with all of its powers and sets and gear to buy and stuff to do. You have the temporal specialization, which you is, is a whole nother thing to level up in. And has powers, passive abilities, and things associated with it that you get in Starship Trait and all that. Then you have Temporal Bridge Officers. It's a specialization that you can train your bridge officer to become a Temporal Officer. Um, and that is a whole new slew of bridge officer abilities in space as well as ground. And of course, that can only be equipped on future ships or ships we're going to get in the future none of the ships we have right now can support those bridge officers um I, 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 of course ground is different you don't need a ship for that so any in that'll just work but for space you will have to get one of the new ships with a hybrid temporal bridge officer seating um and then of course the temporal starships themselves which have has those abilities that we talked about, uh, reconstruction ability and doing different things and uh, all of that. Uh, so a whole lot of temporal stuff coming. Uh, on just just with that, not even you know putting the missions and the toss stuff behind. Just that stuff itself is pretty decent in terms of size. I want to know what you guys think of all that. Is it too much? Is it too complicated? Do you understand it? Do you know what powers you'll be using when you have characters? Are there too many powers to choose from now? I'd like to hear all of that. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think about all that. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all for watching this new update and stay tuned for the next one. Uh, uh.